In this lesson, we're going to check out a, uh, a temperature sensor that basically is, is about as simple as you could expect. You just plug it straight into the, Ardu um, the Arduino and, and then read from the analog pin. Let's check it out. So the temperature sensor we're using for this project is the TMP36, and this one happens to be on a little breakout board. But basically, um, they uh, work identical to one that's not in a breakout board. Um, it looks kind of like this. It's just a little semicircular uh, block with three leads coming off of it. Um, as you look at the flat face, the left-hand side is voltage in, and you, it accommodates anywhere from 2.7 to 5.5 volts. The right-hand lead is ground, and the central one is is your data. It's analog voltage out, and what you have to do is convert that voltage into temperature, and when you do that, you will get a fairly accurate reading. Okay, let's, uh, let's look at the software end. Okay, let's begin writing the sketch for the temperature sensor. All right, we're going to have the integer temperature sensor equals A0. And that's where you're going to want to plug your sensor's uh, data terminal into your um, analog zero port. And then let's uh, initialize that variable with a value of zero. Now let's do a void setup. So we have to declare that pin as being an input pin. So we have our variable temperature sensor, which holds the pin number. And let's just do a serial begin just so we can actually see what um, the temperature reading is. All right, now let's do the loop. Okay, this is basically all you need. You, you need, you have this variable temp um, uh, with a value of zero and uh, but now you want to um, take a reading from pin A0 and that will give you a result uh, depending on what the temperature is in the area. However, it's not going to be terribly helpful. You have to you have to convert it. And um, depending on your your setup, uh, you may find that uh, you have to you have to calibrate it yourself. In other words, take a, an accurate temperature reading and then um, and then adjust this in order to make it uh, work. So we're gonna do an example of that. So I did I tested it and I found that I had to do um, some some math to get it about where it ought to be. I subtracted a, 125, and that gave me a fairly accurate Celsius reading. Um, however, I want to I want to change that to Fahrenheit. So let's do a little bit more math here. There's probably a more elegant way to do this, but I got it to work this way. So, um, and basically, I'm I'm taking temp and I'm dividing it by I mean I'm multiplying by nine, and then dividing it by five, and then adding third thirty two to it, um, and and that and that's given me a, an accurate result. Okay, um, and now let's have our data sent to this the serial terminal I mean 
the serial monitor. So let's have this um, just just so we know what the data is when we see it. It's going to say temp and then the reading serial print line temp. This will put um, this will put a carriage return on the end, so everything will be on its own line. Let's just have a little delay uh, of half a second between readings, just to just so you're not overwhelmed. And now let's close it off and upload. Oops. Oh, you know what it is? I forgot to put the uh, semicolon after a zero. Oh, and I also spelled sensor wrong. All right. Okay, I got it to upload. Um, now let's see what's going on in the serial monitor. Well, according to this, it the ambient temperature should be about 64 degrees. I've got um, a multimeter here, and it's showing 66 right there, which is pretty close. Um, I could always try changing the calibration. Let's try minus 122. Mm. Okay, well, the point is that um, you have to you have to do a little math to the reading in order to get it to be accurate. Now you might be concerned and say, wait a second, just because it's it's accurate at one temperature doesn't mean that it's going to scale. It's not going to still be accurate at 100 degrees Fahrenheit versus 70. The thing you have to do is is just test it under a number of conditions. I have a uh, a little infrared thermometer that I can point at things and it'll tell me what temperature they are. So um, if you have something similar, you can take a reading in a couple different areas and mm -hmm. test it and, and make sure that um, it's accurate. Now I'm going to put my finger on the sensor just so you can see how it reacts. I mean, it's pretty dramatic and it feels it's, it's scaling what I'm expecting. Like uh, my infrared thermometer says my skin is, um, like the back of my hand is about 84 degrees. Uh, and so for my fingertips to be according to this 89, but, um, we still have to play around with the, uh, okay, I'm letting it go now. We still have to play around with the, um, This 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 formula right here, subtracting 125 from it. The rest of this here, that's just for converging converting Celsius to um, Fahrenheit. Okay, so I've taken my hand off of it, and you can see it's it's showing 77 degrees now. Uh, so back to room temperature. Okay, so you have this this temperature sensor. Now what? What do you do with it? Well. A couple of things. Number one, the obvious thing would be to um, to do some kind of uh, weather station, and that sounds really cool to me. Like having a having a little barometric sensor and temperature sensor and humidity sensor and, and stuff with a little wireless module to send it to your your tablet or something. That'd be really cool. Another um, thing that is used is used for is as a um, as a, as a security measure so your circuits don't get fried like suppose that you know you have a have like the brains the microcontroller you could have a, a, a temperature sensor on it so that if it starts overheating everything will shut down so you don't fry your your circuit that's it for lesson three in lesson four we're going to check out a cool sensor that detects magnetism called a hall effect sensor Thanks for watching.